Money FM 89.3, best of weekends. A great announcement just was made this week. 108 Media, which is headquartered here in Singapore, has announced that they have picked up the rights for three literary properties and are going to create a TV shows for each of the three. Uh, the first, uh, The Art of Charlie Chan, Hak Chai, of course, uh, written by multiple award-winning r- Singaporean writer Sunny Liu. Also, the literary pioneer, the late literary pioneer, Gopal Barantham's work, Moonrise Sunset, and our very own crime thriller author, Neil Humphreys, uh, Marina Bay Sins. All three of those are going to be coming out. Neil, congratulations. And joining us to talk about that now is Sunny Liu, of course, Singaporean cartoonist, and Justin Demon, the president of International Producer and Distributor 108 Media. Gentlemen, welcome to Weekend Mornings, and congratulations on this great announcement. Hey, thanks so much, Glenn. Great to have you yes, with thanks, us. Glenn. Yeah, th- thanks. Uh, and uh, Justin, let's start with you, since your company is the one that's going to produce this. Uh, give us a little background on on why you decided on these three works, and and what what will actually happen to them as they are translated onto the big or the small screen. They are all kind of like one one's a masterpiece in my opinion, one's a classic, one's the most commercial book that I've ever seen in Singapore. I won't tell you which one is what. You guys can figure it out on your own. Yeah. Should I, um, I just leave now? <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> well, basically, I mean, the one the main thing is like um, we wanted to, we, we saw the potential in this because, you know, we are an international company. We do everything international first. And one of the key things we wanted to do is to kind of, we knew that there's such great work in Singapore that needed to be seen around the world because, you know, what Singapore's always known for a certain type of film or certain type of TV project Mm -hmm. and we kind of of want to make that go away. We want people to know that's more than just crazy rich agents coming, like being able to be filmed in Singapore. So we saw that these three were really, you know, they, they had something about it. It wasn't, we have a mandate in the company basically as long as it excites and it provokes and all three books take Take that for us. Just, right? just briefly, so what the, will they? What will they look like in terms? They'll be they'll be serialized, right? There'll be a series. Uh, how is it going to look on TV eventually? Do you think? Well, what I can say is like, what do you watch over the weekend? If you watch something on Netflix, you know, you watch something on HBO, it's going to look exactly like that at that kind of international quality. Uh, we are packaging. We're developing this both in Singapore and internationally as well through our offices in London and LA. You know, the partners that are coming on board are, are people from overseas. The most important thing about this whole endeavor is just the idea of taking what's Singaporean and making it international at the same time. Yeah, and Sonny, let's go to you and then we'll come to Neil. Uh, how are you feeling about this, uh, taking your your particular book, which has been so beloved and and, and uh, awarded so many great uh, awards internationally. You've never held up my book. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there. because we hear about your books nonstop. Never Everybody held, knows about your books He's never, ever already. held my books, honey. We've never had Sonny on before, so I'm going to give Sonny a little bit extra to <laughs> <laughs> But seriously, Sonny, how do you feel about uh, about this uh, this move to the screen? I think, I think it's sort of a mixed feelings in a way, in the sense that on one hand, I'm very excited to see how it's going to be translated uh, into a new medium, you know, into uh, animation. Uh, on the other hand, it involves letting go a little bit, right? As a cartoonist, you have like, control of the work. Uh, filmmaking is much more collaborative, so you have to let go a little bit. And, and that's, for me, a little, a little bit scary. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, overall, I would say more excited than uh, nervous about it because I, I think they put a, together a good team. And from what I've heard so far, it, it seems like the it's going quite well. And Sunny, just to jump in there, you know, obviously, your book is the masterpiece of the group, and, um, <laughs> and uh, maybe it's the most commercial one. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, your book does have wonderful artistic transitions within it, doesn't it? It's got wonderful styles. It's got a more traditional kind of portrait painting. Then it goes to jumps to comic books, and it becomes like almost uh, sketches and scribbles. I mean, is that one of your concerns that how you translate that from page to screen? I think that's been the concern for uh, people, companies who have tried to who wanted to adapt it initially. Because I think after the the book did well. Uh, overseas, there was interest, there has been interest, 
but the stumbling block has always been how do you translate a book like this with its, you know, stars shifts, everything into animation form, right? And I think the difference with uh, between Monoway Media and other companies or people who have shown interest is that they have shown a real commitment to trying to figure out how to do it, right? They, they have a scriptwriter's uh, room to, to kind of break it down and figure out how, how, how it could work in a new medium, whereas other people have tried to have... Uh, essentially given up the way through the process. They kind of kind of like, okay, it's too difficult. Let's not, just not do it. Yeah. And Justin, tell us a bit about, you know, the 1996 mystery novel by the great literary pioneer, really, Singaporean <laughs> pioneer. So, again, I'm just <laughs> making up the numbers. Uh, Golpal Bharatam. Tell, them about, tell, tell our listeners about that book, why you picked that book. What is it about that book that you think will translate so well onto the screen? Well, Golpal Bharatam has been a kind of, you know, one of... Uh, Singapore's most hidden gems. I, mm. I mean, when you're in the 90s, early 2000s, I'm sure if you're growing up during that time, you know, maybe the schools would have told you, oh, pick up this book to kind of read. But I think over the last 10 years, it's sort of, you know, disappeared or, or, or you know, the, the focus went somewhere else. I think it was time for him, because he's always ahead of his time, you know, the, the teams that he, he he was looking at, the, the kind of characters that he was talking about, they were relevant to now and i think that's one of the key things that we looked at in the book how how relevant is it to to the current days and i mean without i mean that it was always considered a controversial book because it was ahead of its time hmm. so what you're doing is basically looking at what that book represented back then as as what it represents now as well and i think what i really liked about this book is because it's so much part of the zeitgeist at the moment you know it focuses on minority characters in singapore it focuses on on the Indian experience in Singapore, identity issues. And part of what why we wanted to get involved in this is because it's something that an Indian diaspora around the world can immediately relate to as well. And, you know, what, what we are committed to is to make sure that behind the scenes that we have uh, great minority crew, director's talent, as well as in front of the scene as well. So I think this is something that Singapore has been needing to show. You know, it's breadth of diversity that it has and the kind of stories that it has. And I think a show like this and on a premium level, uh, it's something that I think we, we owe it to ourselves to kind of produce for the world market as well. So when people look at Singapore and seeing what kind of content we produce and what we are capable of, they understand that it's not just one kind of production or one kind of uh, show or what kind of level. Yeah, thanks, Justin. And, and uh, Mr. Humphreys, your 2015 tome, <laughs> Marina Bay Sins, which is a uh, nearly a pulp fiction classic. I mean, it's just drivel, isn't it? A I mean, legend you know, in your own lunchtime. It's commercial drivel. <laughs> you know, How the heck did you get in with these other it's two? It's beautifully commercial. It's beautifully commercial. <laughs> you, could be, you could be quiet as well. <laughs> but, but, but Neil, I, no, I am going to ask you, how, how do you feel about having doing, the, doing this to your work? You are a writer. You always have been. You've done some TV famously played raffles need yeah, i say famously, that one more yeah, time yeah. uh no but how do you feel about taking your book and putting it out on the screen uh, take it or leave it <laughs> okay so justin what i'm hearing is neil really isn't that into no, it so no, i think no. you can move on no of course <laughs> it, it, also, yeah. so i'm taking it i'm taking it you know um and neil's the same way right i mean sunny neil you guys brought up the same concerns about you know letting go yeah. of the material how would it be adapted and things like that no i know in all seriousness yes i mean i i've used the analogy of there are they are our babies and it's like when you go to a, you take your child that you've nurtured and reared and raised and then you take it for its first haircut and the hairdresser does an absolutely shocking job with the haircut <laughs> you know you want to kill the hairdresser because it's your baby mm. and so that that is a real uh concern of uh, of mine which i think is a legitimate concern all authors have but you have to also acknowledge that you know, the transition required from page to screen is considerable. Yeah. What I will say is that, you know, I always commercially um, saw Marina Bay Sins more as a TV ad adaptation. Mm. I wrote it in that way, mm. you know, so it's, chapter by chapter is almost scene by scene to oh. a way. So I, I, I rather cynically wrote it to be adapted at some point, and that pleases me. But, but, and this is the point I wanted to bring up with Justin, all three books let's be clear, are not without controversial elements, mm. to say the least, which I refused personally to tone down in my books. But, you know, TV is a very different forum, and the same would apply to Sunny. There are controversial elements in all three titles, Gold Pals as well. Is that a concern? Do you intend to carry those controversial elements all the way through? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Justin, 100%. Yeah. I could 
I mean, that's why that's why I said um, as long as it provokes, it's something that we sort of uh, wear as a badge of honor. Um, the key about doing this as an international first kind of project is mainly because, you know, that's where projects like this are accepted happily. You know, over here, I, I, I think everybody here knows that you take certain guidelines, you work on a certain path to get to where you need. But I think because we don't play it so much in that sandbox all the time, it's important for us to be able to retain those elements and to be honest it's controversial for for here but i i don't, I don't think it's contra- that controversial for the rest of the world you know i think it's playing to the audience that you want so we went audience first these are the kind of books that would fit they're the most international books in singapore yeah and so, we have to hit from that level i was just going to say sunny yours to me yours presents the most interesting challenge, I think, when you think about making it into a TV show or a series of TV shows. Oh, look, he's holding it up again. Yeah, yeah, in (laughs) case you haven't had it. And and Sonny, next time I see you in person, I'd love to get an autograph in this if I can just throw that in there too. But no, but as I, you know, as you read through this, you know, 300 pages of very diverse elements, how do you see it coming together as a, as a serialized TV show? I mean, it'll be a it'll be in a kind of animated format, correct? Yeah, I, I think it's be animated, possibly be live action as well, but definitely mixed media because I think that's one of the key things. We're going to have different animation styles uh, to reflect the different drawing styles as well. Mm. Beyond that, actually, I I think it was good that Justin uh, suggested that we make it into a TV series rather than a film because uh, actually my initial. Uh, thoughts were that it would be a like a like a film right if there was ever an adaptation hmm. which would have been like an hour and a half long two hours at most so that would have even been more condensed and made it more difficult so i'm glad they talked me around to you know making it into a series rather than just one film i think that actually helps uh make it easier to adapt the the amount of content that's in a book. Right. Yeah. Sonny, Justin makes an interesting point there about international audiences. A couple of things. One, they're not particularly interested in what to them is very small domestic uh, so-called controversies. And two, they just want good international stories. And, and what are your thoughts on the fact that they're, by the sales of your book, it's very, very clear that international story, uh, international audiences want Singapore-centric or singapore set stories as long as they're told well i mean what are your thoughts on the idea because traditionally it's been that idea that local Mm. stories don't travel local stories don't translate and you know we can't sell local clearly that's not the case yeah i i don't think that's actually i want to say it's not a valid concern but i mean i would say that we're all humans right we're all human beings and as human beings we all have similar concerns at some level you know whether you're talking about mortality or having you know uh, parents grow old or any of those things. So t- to me, uh, yes, every, every story is based in a particular setting, which means that it will be contextualized to a you know, given scenario. But beyond that, there are always you know, fairly universal concerns that we all have. So I don't think that uh, just because it's set in Singapore or any particular country means that it won't have a outreach to people from other, in other countries. So I, that's never seemed to me to be a, a problem. And Justin, just to follow up, as the uh, president of uh, international producer and distributor 108 Media, when you go into these meetings in LA and, or, or Zoom at the moment, but when you're having these meetings with international developers, investors, what conversations are you having with these guys? What are their views on Singaporean stories? Before Crazy Rich Asians, it was never really a conversation. I think after Crazy Rich Asians, it became more like, oh, are you telling more stories about rich people? You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. what, that's what Singapore's known for now, right? Mm. It's, uh, it's just a hub for rich things. So what will, I mean, if you look at all three books, it tackles that perception in different ways. Like going through the history of Singapore in, in, with Charlie Chan, talking about, about politics, talking about socioeconomic issues. I think... It's something that people overseas don't even think about Singapore having this sort of history. They probably think of us as having a really boring kind of of, of, of backdrop. Um, with Marina Bay Sins, we take that whole story of the haves and the haves nots and we, we twist it around, you know, and, and put a spotlight into the underbelly of what of how, what all this wealth actually means to the rest of the world. With uh, Gopal's book, it was set in, nine, in the 90s in Singapore when Singapore was just about at the cusp of becoming the powerhouse that it was you know what sort of what sort of moves that singapore had to make to get to where it was you know like like did one of the big parts of that book for example which i really like was them questioning whether or not singapore lost uh, 
did it, did they sell part of its soul to become mm. this rich? Mm. So things like this, you know, it, it digs into what that perception of Singapore is, and I think that's an important kind of alternative type of content that we need to put out there about Singapore. And it's not just people saying this is what Singapore is good for. Let's put it in a box, and and that's where it's going to be sold. So I think for us, it's to bring that Singaporean qualities qualities out, but at the same time package it smartly with a lot of international elements as well. Uh, speaking with Justin Demon, the president of 108 Media, Sonny Liu, author of The Art of Charlie Chan, Hawk Chai. And hold Neil, it up. Hold it up. And Neil Humphreys. You haven't held it up for 30 <laughs> seconds. Hold it up. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. And Neil Humphreys, so, who wrote some book or other. I'm not really yeah, sure yeah, which one it is. Oh, no, no. Neil Humphreys, uh, <laughs> The Marina Bay Sins, and also the uh, late literary pioneer, Gopal Barantham, Moonrise, Sunset. Justin, a question to you, uh, based on the announcement that was made, you're looking at uh, getting these released late 2021 or sometime in 2022. That seems like a very tight timeline for a series of of shows that have to be written, scripted, cast, uh, location, you know, locations agreed to and all that. Are those timelines realistic when you think of a year from now, possibly having something out into the, uh, the TV ecosystem? What I'll say is Neil and Sunny know that you know we've all had this book for about a year now, and during that span of time, we actually did a lot of work on on the development of it, from the scripting to getting the packaging right, meaning the right talent behind the scenes, you know. And with things like Moonrise, for example, we we've, we've got our directors, we've got our our a good amount of the cast as well, you know. So I think what we're doing is that we were only ready to let the world know what we were doing and what the steps were after we knew exactly how how fast and how much we can we can take on you know so i think we've first you know one of the big things with with sunny's book was that everybody kind of started, sort of needed to know how exactly because the book is so disparate in how how the storytelling was the tone you know the pacing the kind of the you know the way it was presented so once we got over that hump it was good for us to sort of be able to to tell the world, okay, we've got the vision right. You know, that was always the hardest part. Once the, during the adaptation process, getting that vision right has always been the hardest part of of a, any producer's job and any writer's job as well. So, uh, and I think Neil Neil saw the vision that we put out for for the pilot as well for for Marina Bay Sins and how we're going to how we're looking at casting this as well, which I think mm-hmm. is a very exciting next step that we hope the world would know soon. And, yeah, so I think the heavy lifting has been done. It's just about executing now. Sonny, on that point, what was it that convinced you in the end about 108 Media? I know you've mentioned a bit about the transitions and the different styles of art within your book. But what was it about those particular conversations that you had that convinced you that this masterpiece, I've said it again, (laughs) uh, this masterpiece (laughs) will translate onto the screen? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm still not sure that it will be, you know, successful. I mean, it, it's still, un- until it's done, until it's out there, mm. yeah, I, I don't think you can be sure, right? There, there are no guarantees in, in uh, any kind of artistic creation, right? But you keep your fingers crossed. And I think part, part of what made me convinced or at least persuaded was that uh, uh, Justin has put together a good team, right? Produ- producers, writers uh, who are involved, I, I think all have good track record. I've seen some of their work. You know, and I think at some level you have to trust that the the talent will you know be able to produce something interesting. You know, I I don't think it'd be the, you know that it wouldn't be the point. There would be any point to doing it if it's going to be just like the book, right? So I think the the whole idea of uh, adaptation is to create something that's based on a book, but also has a life of its own. And I think that's what um, we we're, we're all hoping yeah. for. Yeah. Just I, I want to take this one 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 moment to just give a shout out to Jeremy Chua, who's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of our producers as well on, on Charlie Chan, and you know he's done such a great job with the mm. writers as well. And you know, I, I, I he's, I mean, it's it's about an idea of trusting your team and the creatives as well. And mm. I think that, that works from from our angle as well. Well, I know. And, and, and going back, yeah, go on, oh, sorry. go on, Sunny, yeah. Uh, going back, to, going back to what Justin was saying earlier about how uh, people perceive Singapore, you know, just based on crazy rich Asians. And I think what's interesting, particularly now, just after the recent elections, is that. Uh, I think Singapore in the American imagination, especially the Republican imagination, is one of uh, free markets and you know, all the policies that they're arguing for, they believe Singapore is doing, right? And I think uh, that's based on a very poor, shallow understanding of Singapore. Yeah. So I think in, in that sense, it, as much as we can contribute to a, a better understanding in America of what Singapore is, maybe we can help uh, that country 
Mm. not go down well, the Republican route too much. That's, that's a key point and maybe one for both of you, Justin, first, is that one of the reasons I was keen to work with Justin and write the book in the first place is I'm not going to get into the whole crazy rich Asians. It did very well at the box office and it was a huge hit for Singapore. But it's not my Singapore. It's not a Singapore I even vaguely recognize. And that, I would say that would be true for most Singaporeans. And so, and, and, and if, but unfortunately, if you speak to international audiences and people... Everyone in Singapore is a millionaire, according to them. <laughs> We're all super rich, super, super rich. There are no less fortunate. There are no poor. There are no people earning $600 a month or $500 a month. That doesn't happen. And I, I just feel that, Justin, first, it's important to give maybe a, a more rounded perspective of what Singapore is like. A hundred percent. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. When One of the reasons why I've always been the kind of producer I've been is because early days when I was kind of starting out, everybody sort of told me that, um, are you sure you can do English language films in Singapore? I think you can only do Chinese language films. <laughs> are you sure you're going to fit into this industry? You know, you know, and, and coming, you know, being trained and coming from, from the U S and, and LA since LA and both New York as well. I knew that there was an appetite for, from overseas about finding out stories that weren't just coming out of the U S you know, and we knew that Asia was going to be the next place to do it. Um, Singapore's an interesting place, right? It's 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 a hybrid of a very Eastern and Western kind of, of society. For some reason, we lean a lot on 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 trying to create a, a, a very Westernized view to the rest of the world. When you know we have different cultures, we have different a lot of diversity in this country that isn't being shown to the rest of the world. Um, the, the people take it as like a, a joke, but it is true. There are some people in the world that do believe that Singapore is part of China. You know, it, yeah. it was it was an issue that you know you had to deal with people. I was in Europe once, and people were like, they found out I was from Singapore. Say, are you sure you're from Singapore? Really? You know, <laughs> you don't look like you come from Singapore. Yeah. And, you know, and so, one just, the, Justin, yeah. one quick question. You know, we think about Crazy Rich Asians and the the bar that that set. Would we expect to see? Of course, we have many fine Singaporean and Malaysian actors that you know one would hope you would uh, get involved. But would we see? major international Western names, uh, stars associated with any of these projects? For news book, 100%. I'm so it's, desperate uh, to say. I can't say, but I'm so <laughs> desperate to say. I'm so desperate. It's, it's, it's set up from the very beginning from the foundation as a UK-Asia co-production. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. we, we, that's why we have our team in the UK kind of running point on this. And you know what? The book itself lends itself to that. We're not, we're not force-feeding any... Uh, Eastern or Western elements into something that wasn't already there. Right. You know, with Sunny's book, because it was so well known outside of Singapore as well, you're going to see some of that elements coming in from maybe the packaging of it from behind the scenes. Um, but as much as possible with Sunny's book, we want to keep keep it with Singaporean talents as much as we can. That's why we have such a great team of writers. They're all young Singaporeans that you know they devour books like this. You know they yeah. they they speak on it, speak about it in their Reddit channels. You know. They, they have long discussions about the book, and we wanted to bring that guys into this. Yeah. Sonny, we've just got a minute left. I'm going to give you the last word because Neil gets the last word all the time. Uh, and we'll give, a, we'll give a word to him later. But uh, what's your hope for this at the end of the day when this finally gets on TV? What, what do you want the reaction to be? Great reviews, lots of uh, royalties. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In that order? Uh, I, mean, I, I, I think that the main thing would be just to have an interesting piece of work. I think that that's the baseline, right? And I think also the also the uh the goal right to just to have a experience that you can view and learn something from enjoy and all those things that you get from good tv yeah Awesome. Sonny Liu, author, uh, Justin Demon, president of 108 Media, Neil Humphreys, author of Marina Bay Sins, and the late local pioneer, literary pioneer, Gopal Barantham. We're looking forward to seeing all of your stories on the big screen. Thanks for being with us today on Money FM. Thank you so much for having us here. Thank, Thank you, guys.